can you do right now to improve your life and to transition to healthful, complete raw diet? I will show you what I typically get at the store for my week, among my weekly groceries. And I will start with the foundation of my diet, which is greens. First thing that I need to mention, don't buy boxed greens. When you buy pre-chopped kale, when you buy all those like spinach leaves, spring mixes, they are already chopped, they're washed, they have been handled, they have small pieces, they lose their nutrients. Oftentimes you get some like spoiled leaves, it's so unpleasant. So what you do, you buy whole leaves. I buy a couple of bunches of kale, I already went through one, it's not my first day after shopping, but I'll just show you. I buy two bundles of dinosaur kale, and I also buy for color, I usually get purple kale as well. So with purple stem, it's a really beautiful thing, very beautiful addition to your salad. Among the cruciferous vegetables, while we're on this subject, you can also get red cabbage, very beautiful in your salad, ordinary cabbage, you can get ordinary broccoli, you can get cauliflower. What I like among cruciferous family is broccoli, it's spelled Rabe, but if I say it, it will be broccoli ray. I need to really emphasize B in order to make it sound flatter. So this is broccoli. Um, I like to call it just wild broccoli because it looks very untamed. It looks like it's some weed. It has some broccoli-esque looking uh, flowers in the middle. The secret to amazing meals, to amazing salads, is aromatic herbs. I get four or five bunches of parsley per week, depending on the size. So if it's, it would go on to last me a week, I want a lot of parsley. So this is pretty much how much I get per one salad. And this is a super important thing because without it, your salad might may feel a little bit like uh, plain. So you want a lot of it for good tasting salad. And here is the secret. When you chop your salad, chop everything together in one bundle such that when knife presses on it, all juices get released and intermixed. Uh, in addition to that, of course, we get what? We get dill. Dill is something that I adore. It's the smell of my childhood, the smell of the summer in the countryside. When you go pick it up from the garden and make fresh salad with radishes, with cucumbers, Amazing. And then, of course, if you don't mind it, absolutely get cilantro. Cilantro is the magic herb combined with other foods. It ensures that you effectively eliminate heavy metals from your bloodstream. You cleanse your body after such interventions as uh, that means. Uh, after, I don't know, like working in some polluted environments, living in the big city is also pretty dangerous because cars exhaust, factories, they all emit some gases containing heavy metals in them, potential. So it's a really good prophylactic measure without the need to inject any chelating uh, medicines and so on. I don't know, but I think it's also, yeah, we, we, st we still go back to cruciferous. Bok choy. I buy baby bok choy because it's small and cute and if you like big one, it will have a little bit more hearty part. Bok choy go goes really well in salads as well and uh, I'm already pretty low on this. I bought just one bunch of collard greens. This all I just pick just enough for one salad of a big bowl. In the next video, we will cover that. If you suffer from high blood pressure due to salt, due to sodium, get celery. Get celery and drink celery smoothie or juice. I like to drink celery smoothie with apple and lemon. Incredible cleansing, refreshing, hydrating smoothie. Uh, I just get the whole thing and uh, drink it all with one apple and one. Uh, lemon or orange or any berries you want. Cranberries will work wonders as well. Add water for better like hydration for just if it's summertime or if you go to the gym. It will be a nice drink for you to restore organic sodium that actually helps you to reduce the impact that excessive consumption of 
salt that you put on your food does to your body. And then another ingredient that is very handy to purchase is beets. Um, beets, I buy a bundle and I grate them in my salad. It adds beautiful color, it adds lots of flavor, it pairs really well with horseradish, you know, of course, with pretty much all ingredients. If you want to add sauerkraut to it, it also will be incredibly good. So you can make a variety of salad which contains root vegetables such as beets, such as carrot, and uh, just grate them in your salad and go ahead. So what else do we need to buy at the store? I hope you're writing all these items down. I hope you hit like to this video. I hope you subscribe to my channel for more content and you're already thinking what to write in the comments about what I'm talking about. Uh, irreplaceable thing for the salads, of course, avocado. I would really advise you to not use refined oils in your salad, especially if you have, for example, painful periods, something like that. Because refined oils, depending on where you source them, how they were manufactured, they can be pretty inflammatory. They can screw up your hormones as well. Research this subject better, but I noticed great improvement when I completely ditched refined oils and switched exclusively to wholesome sources of fat. So avocado a day makes your skin glow, makes you cheerful and satiated. Get avocados like six, seven, depending on how often you go to the store. Then we have here onions. Buy red onions. I'm telling you, they're so much more flavorful than white onions. They're very sweet, very beautiful, very supple, succulent, and chop them coarsely in your salad and indulge. Incredible. I put the whole bowl in my salad, so probably it would be reasonable to use half a bulb or a smaller bulb. I prefer to buy smaller onions because then I can use one, I don't need to store the half in the fridge and so as far as forget about it and then it dries out so I produce food waste. I don't like that. I get, uh, I like to get smaller bulbs. And then on the, on the page of sulfur containing foods, of course garlic. Garlic. You can grate it. What I do with garlic, this is the trick. You put garlic on the board, you put the garlic clove, like garlic clove. Then you take a knife, this is the knife. You don't chop it like this, you do this to the garlic. And then when you smashed it, then you chop it, finally. You chop the garlic and then you let it sit on the board to interact with air, such that it maximizes the enzyme content. So these are things, then bell peppers. Uh, bell peppers go into my every salad of mine. My dog loves them. I give him bell pepper a day. He just crunches the whole thing. I have very cute videos about it. Uh, and bell peppers are super flavor bearing thing that you should get every time. Then, uh, now we are continuing on the majestic salad subject and fermented foods will do the trick. You get Fermented beets, you get fermented sauerkraut if you like more Asian palate, then you can get kimchi, you can even get fermented seaweed, there is a very nice brand, however, unfortunately, their quality control kind of sucks, so I notice that sometimes you get them and they have a lot of uh, growth on top, which kind of freaks me out, but fermented foods, if you like doing fermentation by yourself, you want to save money, then do it yourself, but sauerkraut is the absolutely mandatory ingredient. Why? Vitamin K2. Vitamin K2 is responsible for retention of your bone mass. We, it's like people from the street habitually would think that their skeleton is built off of calcium. So you need just dump a bunch of calcium in, in, into your body. In fact, in order to utilize calcium, you need magnesium vitamin D and vitamin K2, so be mindful about it. The best source of vitamin K2 among vegan palate is uh, some crazy uh, Japanese bean fermented uh, sticky gooey thing, I don't remember. It's made of soy, I forgot its name, but it's really crazy, I'm not ready to eat that. 
Now, another thing is that if your microbiome and uh, fermented foods pretty much ensure that you have nice bacterial flora in your intestines, they uh, make they, they ensure that your intestinal flora is functional and can produce you essential vitamins and even amino acids. It's a miracle of nutrition, and while we're on the page of fermented foods, it's coconut kefir that I also get every week, especially for those who transition to raw diet. It's an invaluable thing. It's so tasty, it's so good. It's sparkling. Mm. If everybody around you drinks alcohol for some celebration, pour yourself coconut kefir and maybe squeeze some orange juice in it and be the king of the party with all the beautiful health benefits that it carries. So it will have, first of all, of course, bacteria. Second, it will also contain all minerals that are contained in the coconut water naturally. But it won't have any sugar because all sugar was eaten by bacteria. They produced gas and just boosted their population off of that sugar. What else do we need to buy at the store? I didn't mention sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes and actually zucchinis are one of the, are those like foods that you can eat raw that you probably didn't think about. Uh, I don't mention tomatoes here and uh, ordinary tomato, ordinary potatoes or eggplants. Nightshade family, you see, I only have peppers from Nightshade family here. Uh, I'm not really big fan of, uh, but if you are, go ahead. I'm showing you foods that have uncompromised benefits here, okay? While we're in the produce section, uh, let's look at some fruits. Bananas are a really cool source of vitamin B, a uh, group of like B, B vitamins, there are several of them containing in bananas. And of course, I make my favorite porridge with them, consisting of him. I buy him bulk, it's five pound bag, lasts me a month. And flaxseed that I soak in water to make seeds very pleasant. Then I add mashed banana to it, frozen raspberries, and chocolate, cocoa powder, I mean, and nuts. Nuts, here I have the best nuts on the market, they're sold in Whole Foods. These are the tastiest raw almonds that I found in the market. And of course, walnuts. This is an opened jar. I kind of got slowed down on walnuts this month, but soon I will resume. Grapefruits and lemons, all citrus, buy it. My, my advice, if it's not an orange, please blend it in the blender and drink it with something or use them as part of your salad because otherwise you may increase teeth sensitivity. So I prefer them blended as well as lemons. With lemons I make either dressings or add them to all smoothies such that I reduce the oxidation rate of the smoothies. What else? Of course, ah, I want to show you yeah, grapes. Yeah, I buy grapes too. Grapes are insane. They're like candy. Fun fact, grapes contain naturally, or naturally occurring organic fluoride. Cool thing. Uh, so, a couple more functional foods. So, people have obsession with protein. I already showed you this. Him. I have video about plant-based protein, um, just undisputable benefits, undisputable um, nutritional profile, of course, but for salad, this is absolutely gorgeous. Pumpkin seeds go insanely well in your salads, they don't impart any conflicting flavor, they don't accentuate any, like, they don't have any accentuated taste. They just add this suppleness and crunch. You can soak them before putting them on the salad. Usually this pack that contains two eight ounces, 227 grams, I usually use a third of this pack per day. Then here I have Brazil nuts. Brazil nuts go on my porridge. Um, there are only like pieces left. Brazil nuts are wild and they're extremely good source of selenium. Absolutely recommend you to indulge in them. And then for smoothies, get some frozen berries. This goes to my porridge, this goes to smoothies. If you want to brighten up any green smoothie, buy pineapple chunks. They're cheap. They're one of the cheapest fruits that you get in the freezer section. Get them as much as you can. Oh my god, they smell so amazing. After I'm done with this video, I will go indulge in pineapple smoothie. So three last things that I will show you that are mandatory pretty much for everyone to consume 
apple cider vinegar. This is the best apple cider vinegar out in the market. I love this one. You just make your salad, you pour it on top generously, unlike, actually, unlike some fruit smoothies with a bunch of citrus or lemon juice or just purely eaten citrus that is unripe particularly, apple cider vinegar added to the salads does not increase teeth sensitivity. It may be due to that salad contains a bunch of minerals inside of it, I don't know, and so it buffers it down, or it's just inherent property of apple cider vinegar, which is interesting because its pH is the same as that of lemon juice. So, apple cider vinegar, and then another cool condiment is namashoyu sauce. You only need a little bit, a little bit goes a long way. Get it? to tickle your fancy, to make your salad, to make your meals beautiful and tasteful. And then the third, the last thing that I will show you is a supplement. It's vitamin D. I get vitamin D. I used to have vegan formula that's made of... Um, uh, these are like symbiotic things that are not quite fungus, but not a plant. I, I don't know the English word for it. This one, I think, is the one that's made of um, sheep hair. So it's not vegan formula. But vitamin D in the conditions when during the day you need a freaking lamp to make your room bright is a necessity. If you live anywhere above, I don't know, Virginia or Northern Italy, then get vitamin D. It's a mandatory thing from October down to June. That's not arguable point because vitamin D deficiency is so prevalent, it's just crazy. And then the bonus thing that I will show you today. Ta-da! This is nori, untoasted one. I already, I eat 50% of the pack per day. I don't know, I'm such an addict of this nori. It's so good. What I do with it, I take nori, I take avocado, I mash it with lemon, I make a puree, and then I spread it on top of nori and I wrap it. And I eat about five sheets of this per day. It's a huge money sink, so I will be looking for bulk supplier of nori because this is completely budget unsustainable, but I crave it so much. Let's read the micronutrient content in nori. First of all, it contains 80% of daily value of vitamin B12 in just one sheet. Secondly, it contains quarter of the daily iodine per one sheet. So four sheets, 100% of iodine, incredibly important for uh, functioning of hormonal system and your brain as well. Add to it omega-3s and uh, so you're all set. Then vitamin K, 50% but vitamin K, excuse me, if you eat so many greens, vitamin K is the last thing that you will worry about for real. But there again, vitamin K1, vitamin K2, vitamin K1 is responsible for your blood coagulation. Vitamin K2 is the one that actually works with the simulating calcium and retaining your bones. So you need to be mindful about that vitamin A is also not interesting. Again, all this diet, if you consume all this per day, you don't need to worry about vitamin K, vitamin A, uh, potassium, especially magnesium that will be through the roof, manganese will be through the roof. So here, what, what's important is again, that it supplies you iodine and vitamin B12. Important note, important note, you need to get accustomed to actually digesting the seaweed properly because at first you won't have enough enzymes to break it down. Chew them incredibly well and of course if you want to rely on nori as your sole source of let's say vitamin B12, don't do this. Uh, if you are already deficient in vitamin B12, this is a very important statement. Get sublingual formulas and don't get too charmed about this because this will take some time for your digestive system to um, adjust to being able to digest them properly and extract all the goodness that they have. So get sublingual formula if you are already deficient 
and don't play those tricks. Your, of course, your bacterial flora is supposed to learn to produce B12. Of course, if you live out in the, on the wild, in the wild, you won't live in hyper hygienic environment, and you will not need to worry about industrial pollution, so to speak, if you grow your own food in your own soil with your own compost as a fertilizer or with the uh, minerals that uh, come from the tree li leaves, that will not be a problem. But of course, if you get all your produce from the stores, if you live in a very clean environment, especially if you come from certain conditions that have like, you know, you, you have low stomach acid, you, it, it's hard for you to break down certain things. Uh, uh, you have sufficient enzymes, then, yeah, um, just replenish your B12 through pharmaceutical formulas. Best if you use methylcobalamin, not cyanocobalamin, for, for a pretty clear reason that's hidden in the root of the word. Um, uh, but, yeah, to roll with something, nori sheets. Um, these are, again, untoasted very cool uh, and uh, this is something that I can't oh, oh, I, I will be looking for bulk supply because that's I just go through so much of it it's my favorite food with avocado and lemon juice it's just miraculous it's miraculous guys so here I will conclude my video so I hope this helped you you took notes you have a list of foods that you need to buy next time you go to the store and I wish you best of the health, best of your performance and that you go to your doctor just to say hi. Uh, so I wish you all this prosperity, wealth, health, energy and vitality. Bye!